So welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about biocomputing. What is biocomputing? Computing all of you know for a computers uh, we need to have a computation and computer works based on the linear algebra and as well as laws of classical mechanics uh, physics. So nowadays we are having quantum computers which works again based on the Boolean algebra but instead of classical physics here it will be advanced physics or we call, we call it as a quantum mechanics based on quantum mechanics if it is working so we are calling it as a quantum computers or more than the beyond the supercomputers okay so let's come back to the biocomputing so biocomputing is the, it refers to in the computation only if you are using any biological molecules then you can call it as a biocomputing this is a very simple definition now what are these biomolecules it can be cells enzymes dna of for the for what applications you are using for computing and information processing okay so this field combines both the principles of computer science and biology okay so along with this computer science and biology there is one more field which will combine these two that is engineering okay so we are having computer science biology and engineering so these three fields we are using combining and using to create a novel system that means you are bringing out the new systems for the for what purpose to come for the computing and data storage applications okay understand so that is what is called as a biocomputing those are the definitions of the biocomputing now the technological importance of the biocomputing which lies in its potential okay it has got a great potential to provide very new and very innovative solutions for the computing and information processing applications so let's see here are some of the uh, key ways in which the biocomputing can be an important uh, sorry impact the current technology first and foremost thing is computational power biocomputing systems have a potential to provide a new level of computation power that means that it can increase by 10x okay imagine the computation power will can increase by 10x okay 5 to 10x so as they can perform complex tasks and ca calculations using biological processes because inside our body whatever the uh, uh, there are you know thousands to millions of pathways are going on inside our body now these enzymes these cells are able to catch that and inside our brain you know that how many billions of you know tasks can happen within a second computers are not even close to you know 10 percent of brain forget about 10 even 1 percent of brain understanding so so many tasks we are getting so those biological molecules can perform more complex structure tasks within a given time so that was about computational power to increase the computational power we can use the biological molecules so that by our biocomputing systems next data storage so here you know that dna our dna is we are what we are the result of billions of you know years right from the most of the believe that uh, from adam and eve that was the first uh, those were the first humans from this and some be, some believe that evolution whatever it may be even the evolution in the smaller there is something called as minimum cell quantity that's minimum cell quantity is nothing but what dna should be there so that without dna you can just you can't just evolve so that dna from that uh, from the beginning of the human being to so far today okay we have come you know almost you know millions of generations now these millions of generations we are carrying millions of tasks a one person can do a many tasks and what our brain is doing different tasks our heart is doing different tasks our kidney is doing different tasks okay all these parts are doing their different different tasks and these all tasks are managed by single dna and we got it from single dna imagine so there are billions of people are on earth nowadays right they are doing their tasks without given without being charged if you want to you to use a computer you need to charge right but if you want to use your brain you don't have to charge you just have to eat understanding so that's imagine the amount of data it is storage dna is nothing but what it is a data storage actually so for example when you get uh, when, uh, when you uh, uh, when the person when the parent gives a particular uh, you know when the, uh, uh, when parent gets a baby that means he is a result of a parent that means when he, it, it is a result of a single sperm and egg right and then the, you were uh, the process will start okay so this particular son will have the characters of parents right or wrong so this is again these characters are again you know 
or copied from that one single DNA. Now that one single DNA will become one human being and one human being will are having many organs, many cells, millions of cells, millions of neurons, right? Understanding. That means so much energy, uh, you know, what you say, in this particular DNA has got instruction to form everything inside our body, eyes and how the eyes should look like, how the hair should look like, how the person should be tall or small, okay, how our organs should uh, you know, develop. Every information is stored in a single piece of DNA, understanding. So now if you are using this particular DNA for the storage, obviously imagine how it will be, it's going to be helpful. Okay, so here one of the alloys given by computing systems can be used to store and process large amount of data. For example, a DNA has a high information density, that is nothing but consider that a single gram of DNA that can theoretically store 215 petabytes, that is nothing but one petabyte is nothing but one million gigabytes. Imagine. So in that almost 215 petabytes. One petabytes itself is nothing but one million gigabytes of data. So the, the DNA and one milligram of DNA, not whole DNA, one milligram of DNA will be having 215 petabytes and one petabyte is, is equal to how much? Theoretically millions, one million of gigabytes okay of data so that can be easily synthesized and can be amplified so that means data storage is the best quality that dna has ever got okay and then medical applications so medical applications we are having a, a the biocomputing system that can be used to develop new diagnostic tools and therapeutic approaches in medicine such as biosensors and gene therapies for example, biocomputing. Biocomputing systems is nothing but again based on the biological images. Now, what do you mean by to develop new diagnostic diagnosis in medical field? There is only two things: diagnosis, therapeutic. Diagnosis in the sense to detect the disease. Therapeutic approach in the sense to treat the disease. Now, 90% in the uh, medical field is uh, uh, effort is given to the diagnosis. Why? Because if the diagnosis is done, if you can able to understand what is the disease, then the pharmacist already have told you that for this disease, this is the drug. Biotechnologists have prepared it, pharmacists are selling it and you know that as a doctor, you know that what is the this thing. Now, what is the what is the job of doctor to identify what disease it is? That involves diagnosis, maximum ninety percent. Ten percent is a treatment. That is therapeutic approaches. Diagnosis is nothing but what to detect disease. To therapeutic is nothing but what to treat the disease. So, biocomputing systems can be used to develop a new diagnostic. That means any new diagnosis so that we can have a better understanding of the disease in a short period of time so that doctors can say that like, okay this person is having first you know, stage of cancer, take, take him and start him treating, okay like that. So these kind of new diagnostic techniques we can develop and therapeutic approaches in medicines okay to, for the drug delivery or drug designing applications such as biosensor and gene therapy etc. Next environmental monitoring, biocomputing systems can also be used to monitor and track environmental conditions such as air, water quality in real time. Okay. Next, energy efficiency. So, biocomputing systems are energy efficient. That means, which is becoming increasingly very important. Nowadays, everything requires energy. So, since you are using the bio molecules here, it doesn't require much energy, right? So, we can conserve, we can reduce the energy demand. Okay, so becoming increasingly very important to face the challenges to for, to face the climate change and the need to reduce the uh, need to reduce our energy consumption. So for these applications, energy efficiency is very well in biocomputing systems, so that we can go we can reduce the energy dependency. Next, to robustness. Since the biocomputing systems are highly robust, that means highly speed, as they are less susceptible to the errors and failures compared to the traditional electronic devices or systems. Versatility. Since this particular biocomputing system that can be programmed and reprogrammed, I can program it and reprogram it to perform different tasks, various tasks, which make them highly versatile and adaptable. Okay, they can use it for many, many applications. Advantages, biocompatibility, I have already discussed biocompatibility in the sense it should be very, you know, it should not form, uh, form any harm to the body. It's the similar way. So here these biocomputing systems are made up of biological components so which biocompatibility, biocompatible and less likely to cause any immune responses 
compared to the traditional electronic devices next energy efficiency that we discussed the same point you can copy paste here scalability so by uh, biocomputing systems can be easily scaled up and down or that means if you want to scale large scale you can have here so yes they are based on the biological processes that can be repeated and multiplied within a short period of time next robustness they are highly speed again copy paste from the uh, technological point flexibility so since biocomputing systems can be programmed and reprogrammed to perform different tasks it is flexible that means versatility what we discussed in the previous slide just copy paste so a lot most of the technological importance are the advantages okay next limitation speed so here biocomputing systems are generally slower uh, than the traditional electronic computers as they rely on the biological process that occur in the over time so uh, in biological process what happens it requires little bit time for the processes to perform that's why it is speed is less robustness is there but speed is less so complexity so biocomputing systems can be complex and challenging to design and build why because it is highly it is involved in the biological things that need to be maintained monitored properly so requiring specialized knowledge and expertise is very important that's why it is complexity is one of the limitation next reliability so biocomputing biocomputing systems can be unreliable as of now why because they are subject to the fluctuations and errors inherent in inherent in biological systems okay there might be any if any damages is there, are there in the cells what you are using then it might give you the inherent errors understanding next cost by computing systems can be expensive to produce as they require specialized materials and equipments so that we can keep the cells and the things which is alive and then they have to go under the different biological process to give you the signals so that that can be used that can be used for by computing so that's it uh, the next topic is bioimaging for uh, disease diagnosis that we will discuss in the next class